Hi, my name is Minu Kabir and I'm presenting on the acoustic characterization of a skull and acoustic microscopy approach. Presence of a skull in an invasive transcranial focused ultrasound distorts the ultrasound beam depending on the acoustic characteristics of the skull. The size, thickness, and level of heterogeneity of the skull varies substantially among patients and even at different spots on the same skull. Therefore, an in-situ characterization of a skull is fundamental for simulating ultrasound transmission and designing the system for effective delivery of ultrasound to the brain. Here, we propose an acoustic microscopy technique to measure directly both shear and longitudinal velocities and attenuations. Scanning acoustic microscopy is known as a powerful technique for non-destructive evaluation and characterization of materials. The proposed technology utilizes a large aperture focused transducer that is scanned towards the sample and receives signal at the transducer or process to generate a response curve of the sample, which is also called a VFC. This is a unique pattern of the scanning spot and contains a wealth of information about the properties of the substrate material. This response curve is further analyzed to extract the material properties of the samples. The method developed here has three main steps, starting by implementing the focus transducer to insonify the substrate. The transducer is scanned in z-direction and the output voltage as a function of distance is measured. The ultrasound wave impinges the sample at wide range of angles and generates different modes of lambdas. By implementing a pulse excitation here, we are able to generate a two-dimensional voltage as a function of distance and frequency in a single scanning measure. Theoretically, it's demonstrated that the inverse Fourier transform of the VSZ results in the reflectance function of the material, and by implementing the two-dimensional VSZ NF, we are able to get the reflectance function as a function of theta and frequency. Besides, we have developed a theoretical model for parametric study of the reflectance function based on the closed form equation for the fluid loaded sample. And in a final step, an inversion algorithm is developed in order to estimate the variables of interest by fitting the experimentally measured R and the theoretical one. In this process, we have chosen the four variables as the unknown, and the global search method is used for optimizing this objective function. We have designed an acoustic microscopy system to operate at low frequency range around 1 MHz. It's formed by an in-house manufactured focus transducer made of a spherical piezoelectric shell with F number 1. To validate the method and insufficiency and attenuative materials, first numerical and experimental studies are performed on several bone-mimicking plastic samples, such as plexiglass, high-density polyethylene, and polycarbonate. Preliminary numerical simulation has verified the concept. The algorithm is written in MATLAB to simulate the VFCNF for material of interest. For instance, the synthetic VFCNF for a 6 mm plexiglass sample immersed in water is present here. Um, this is the inverted reflectance function of the sample, and we can see that both phase and amplitude of the reflectance function is flawlessly inverted from the synthetic data. Then the optimization algorithm was able to estimate the exact number for the speed of sound and attenuation of the synthetically generated VFCNF. Next, experimental measurements are performed on plastic samples. The inverted reflectance function for plexiglass samples of 6 mm and 9 mm, as an example, is shown here which represents the dispersion curve of these samples that are experimentally measured, and the traces of minima are representing the different modes of lamb waves generated in these samples, and we can observe them better in a binarized image. These dispersion curves are then used in order to invert the numbers for a 6 mm and 9 mm samples. We can see that the speed of sound and the attenuation numbers are well within the range of the numbers reported in the literature. And here are the experimental results for the HTPE and polycarbonate samples with different thicknesses. And we can see that the inverted numbers are well within the range of the numbers reported in the literature, demonstrating the promise of the technique to be implemented for attenuative samples. Finally, the experimental measurements are performed on human skull samples with different thicknesses. The VFCNF, as an example for 8mm skull sample, is shown here, and the line scan of VFC at 1.2 MHz for samples with different thicknesses are shown here, presenting the unique feature for each sample that represent different modes of lamb waves generated in the samples. However, due to the high level of attenuation, this feature tends to smooth out in the inverted reflectance function of the skull compared to the plastic samples, and it suggests us to operate the system at lower frequency. 
Therefore, to have a better confidence in inverting material properties of skull samples, a proof-of-concept numerical simulation is performed at 500 kHz, assuming the attenuation in the skull is twice as the number for the plastic sample. And the inversion process is validated numerically here, the reflectance function of the skull is accurately inverted as shown, and the numerical simulation results demonstrate the ability of the acoustic microscopy system that's operated at 500 kHz to accurately invert the acoustic properties of the skull. We're currently in the process of building a few acoustic microscope prototypes at 500 kHz. Here is a summary of the work, and thanks for your attention.